Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner, and this is my review for Black Blue Crew Chicago. This is season three, episode three. So, yeah. It was a pretty interesting episode. I'm pissed off about a couple different things. And I'm going to discuss that. Um, but first things first, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. It does not cost you anything. Um, it just lets you know when I have new content up, when I have new videos, new reviews, and things like that. Um, I also let you know that you can um, subscribe, Lord Jesus. That you can share my videos. Um, you can like the videos. Please like the videos and please share the video. Um, there's also a comment section at the bottom. You can always scroll down and go ahead and throw your comment in there. The only rule to comment section is be respectful to me and anyone else making a comment. Let's all be adults, please, and thank you. So, let's just get into this episode of Black Ink Crew Chicago. Now, see, I was very upset part of this episode, mainly because of the disrespect from all the workers. I'm trying to pull up my notes. I didn't have my notes up. Um, but, you know, Van, his antics, um, Danielle and her antics, even Four and Charmaine and they all co-signing of the antics bullshit made me mad. You know, it did start off with the window being fixed. That's how this episode started. Um, as we know, in the last episode, Van old Teddy Bear mad because his honey gone some damn where. Broke the window and got into a fight with Junior. So this is like the following day um, of everything. And, you know, Junior, Four, and Charmaine are at the, off, at the shop talking about it. Um, Junior's like, yeah, so did Van pay to get the window fixed? And Four like, well, you know, it was getting fixed, but it don't matter who get it fixed. Four... You trying to piss me off too, for Don't piss me off, for Um, you know, Van, I mean, not Van, but Charmaine, even her confessional, when she was talking about what happened, she was trying to make it seem as if Van won this fight. Van didn't win that fight. Charmaine talking about, yeah, Van was tossing Junior around. No, they was tossing each other around. No one won the fight. Junior just held his own. And for Van, Van, for Van to be a big old teddy bear, he didn't win like he people thought he would have. He got all them damn muscles for nothing. As Junior said, you a goddamn princess out in these streets, brother. But, um, and I don't know why people are perpetuating the bullshit. Like, Van dead ass wrong for, as I'm moving the camera. Van is dead ass wrong for everything that he's been doing. Um, even if he feel like Ryan should include him more, you going about it in a real childish, immature way. Point blank, period. Um... So, you know, Four was saying how Ryan is trying to take how Ryan is trying to take control of stuff and how Van is trying to be a part of stuff. No Van not. Van being a little bitch baby. That's what he's he's been a bitch baby. He's crying about everything. Van went to jail and I think he really thought the world would just freeze. And ever since he came home things have been different because you went away for, you know, a few months. Life does go on, bruh. And I think ever since then, Van has been feeling some kind of way. Even last season when he came back and Kat was all up her feelings and she was trying to leave. He was like, we have to all be together. You have to let people spread their wings, Van. And this because your ass stuck in Chicago on probation or parole and you can't go and do shit. Don't mean people have to stay stagnant like your ass. Ain't nobody tell you to get arrested for that stuff. Ain't nobody tell you to get some custom cases. You put yourself yourself in those situations. Either way it goes. Some kind of way you, you got yourself in these situations and you're stuck. So you feel like because you're stuck and all you have is 9 mag. That it has to stay the exact same. And that's not how businesses work. Businesses have to flourish. People have to spread their wings. It, I got all off track. You know, Ryan comes in. Of course, Ryan is upset. We find out that Junior did tell Ryan what happened. Um, and Ryan, like, Van is acting childish. She handling this as if we still running in the streets, you know, doing crazy stuff. He like, this is not a game. This is the business. And that's true. That's not how you can You can't. Get mad at your employer where you work or a business that you are that you are associated with. You can't get mad and start destroying property. That's not how adults work. That's not how you make business work. If I was at a tattoo shop and one of the the employees came in 
busting up shit. I don't want to get no tattoos from that shop no more. I don't care how good that shop is and how good the tattoo artists are. I'm not trying to go anywhere where my life can be put in danger. And everyone know in Chicago, this is what I was like in Detroit, but Chicago has its deadly cities. If people die there, it be, it's always on the news about how crazy things be there sometimes. And it's because people overreact to little situations. Van, you could have easily talked to Ryan. Instead, you destroyed some shit. Now, what if someone would have saw you breaking up that man's window and walked past and started shooting you? Or any or anything could have happened or could have escalated. Um, That's just stupid. Point blank period. And Ryan has a reason to be pissed off. So, you know, Forrest... Saying, oh, I think you, you know, I think it should be between you and you and Van. I think y'all should have a conversation. Y'all should talk. Um, he's saying, you know, Ryan, because you changed the locks, that made Van break a window. For what kind of fucked up logic is that? That's why your name spelled like that. F, I mean, P H O R, because you not the right kind of four. Um, that's stupid. You can't say because the owner of the shop changed the locks because an employee was acting stupid. That means the employee. Oh, he had to come break the window. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? And even though Van, I mean, Ford was saying he's not saying it was right, but he's saying it was cause and effect. No, because you tell me I can't come to the shop or because you lock the shop up, the reaction to that should not be to basically break into the shop. That's criminal. That's against the law. You shouldn't say that's Van, for. Don't be stupid. Don't be Van. That, I mean, it's just stupid. Um... So he wasn't how it was not okay with Van did, but he's saying by Ryan trying to run things that he's it's being bad for business that he's he's been a bad boss. No, he's not. Cause some bosses don't give a fuck about how y'all feel. He at least letting y'all talk. Y'all get away with all kind of bullshit at that goddamn go tattoo shop. Y'all be having parties, y'all be in there getting drunk, y'all be in there doing whatever the fuck y'all wanna do. Most bosses don't allow that. You know how many places you work where you have to go to work and work? There is no, you know, hanging out with coworkers. You can't be getting drunk at work. Y'all are getting drunk at a tattoo parlor. Who wants a drunk, drunk ass tattoo artist? But see, y'all don't realize that because y'all are so used to Ryan being so nice. And now that Ryan is realizing, hey, I have to run a business here. You know what I'm saying? I have to run a business. This can be, this can be, can set us up for a while. I have to change some things. Y'all being childish and don't want to change. So, you know, the, um, Ryan says, I ain't talking to him. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to deal with that man. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, he not allow her no more. Yes. Ryan, in this episode, banned Van from the shop. Because of the things he's done. I agree. If you was a regular employee, not only would you be banned from the office, you would, they would call the police on you. They would press charges against you. Like, you'll go to jail, bro. So, Ryan is being nice by just saying, um, you can't come here right now. We ain't trying to fuck with you right now. That was a nice thing to do it. Um, Ryan also brings up how he's going to a tattoo convention in Philly. And he's going to take Junior. For me, it makes sense. Junior, the only person who who gets what Ryan is doing on a business level. Because Junior, for some, you know, he's, he's with it. Because that's his boss. He's thinking logically. Where all the other staff is used to Brian being their friend. They feeling like, he my friend. He don't care. You know what I'm saying? I can be late. He my friend. He don't care. I can bring a hole in here and have sex on the couch. He don't care. I can fuck Charmaine in the bathroom. Don. He don't care. They used to that. And Ryan trying to change that. And they still stuck in, you know, fucking chicks in bathrooms mindset. And that's stupid. And it also makes sense for him to take Junior because he can't take Van. Van on parole. Van can't leave the state. And, you know, he can't take, well, he probably wouldn't take four because four be rapping, doing concerts. So, and he only got two tattoo artists. So, I'm going to take the third one, who also happens to be on my side. So, yeah. Next thing we see, Don and Athy is at church. And I was laughing because Don looked like the little kid who don't want to be at church, but his mama dragged him to church. Because Athy was sitting up there holding his hand. It, it, look, it looked childish to me. Um, and he looked like he just didn't want to be there. Like a little kid who like, I don't want to go to church. Hmm. You know, that's how he was sitting there. Um, but he was, you know, I think he was sitting up at one point, he was clapping. But he still looks like he didn't belong or didn't want to be there. Um... So, after the service, they do talk to the pastor. I'm not going to say they pastor because 
I don't know if Don go to church. Um, and you know, they're trying to talk to him about their anger issues, which they think is a major thing within their marriage. Um, Ashley does say how she thinks she she does say, you know, we have anger issues and we're trying to be better with that. She then insinuates but Don has the worst temper, you know, he's the worst between us two. And he had look over like what? They then cut to the footage of all the times Ashley has went ape shit for nothing. And, you know, it kind of show you have a temper too, but y'all both have a bad temper um, for different reasons. So, I don't think one person's temper is worse than the other. I think because Don is a man, he has seen worse. And because he's, you know, huge, you know, he's all muscle. It looks more intimidating than little old Addie who get mad. But even when she get mad, she's a goddamn gone Tasmanian devil. So, you know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. It's like a big-ass grizzly bear, Don, and a goddamn gone Tasmanian devil, Ashley. And they married together, and they just crazy. And so, you know, Don does admit that he has a temper. He also says, you know, how his temper has gotten him in trouble um, with the law. And just in life, his temper has gotten him in trouble. And he is willing to do what he needs to do to get it under control and to fix his marriage. Bravo, Don. Um, Ashley then say, Don, are you a Christian? Now, this question threw me off. It threw me for a loop because I'm like, how do you not know the answer to that, to that question? That's your husband. Y'all been together for so long. How do you not know if the man you sleeping with is a Christian or not. And, you know, Don pauses. You know, he doesn't immediately answer. Don says no. I was shocked, too. Mainly because Athy was saying how she did not know he wasn't a Christian. How they had never talked about that. I don't understand how anyone can seriously get ma get married and not talk about their religious beliefs. That is a big... um that's, that's, that's the equivalent of getting married and not talking about finance. Not talking about if you want to have children. You should always talk about finances, children, your future, religion, even political views. Because those those are issues that can cause big time divides. So I'm looking like, so you married a man and with a man all this time and you never knew he wasn't a Christian? And she said it was because he never said he wasn't. But you never, y'all never had that conversation, Ashley? I was just like, bitch, what is wrong with you? Like... I would never marry a man if I don't know his beliefs. I don't mean that he would have to be a Christian. You know what I'm saying? But I would want to know what his beliefs are. And, you know, Don admits that when he grew up, he wasn't raised in the church. And he doesn't know much about church or God. Um, which is sad. But at the same time, um, some parents... Like for, like, for instance, Don don't know about God and church. So, he wouldn't be able to teach his child about it because he didn't know. So, it could be a thing of just, um, you know, a, it trickles down to his upbringing. They didn't know. They didn't teach him. He don't know. And it seemed as if Assie wasn't taking him to church because if she was, I'm pretty sure it would have came up that he wasn't no Christian. Um, so... She's concerned because she's like, you know, that can break up a marriage. That can break up, a, you know, a household or whatever. And Don is like, you know, I'm willing to meet you halfway. I don't know if by him saying he's not a Christian that he just doesn't read the Bible. Like, he doesn't know the Bible. Or he, I don't know what he meant by he's not a Christian. I'm guessing he meant he never went to church. Maybe he has never been baptized. I'm just hoping it doesn't mean that he doesn't believe in God. Like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what he meant by he's not a Christian. Because I'm like, if he doesn't know the church, did he even really understand the question? You know what I'm saying? So, and I think I've seen him on many occasions on the show say, oh my God, thank God. So, if you don't know about church, how you talking to God, Don? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, next we see that they are at Charmaine's birthday party. I'm not even going to get into, into the party much. I thought Charmaine's outfit was funny. I thought it, it looked ridiculous her ass cheeks was out the pink fur was cute it was a, a, a 70s theme um skating party cute idea she was just not dressed for it i mean it was so ghetto and ratchet i don't think i don't know what the 70s and her ass cheeks being out had to do with each other um at all um i thought ryan and junior outfits were hilarious they dress for the occasion um I laugh when they walk in and they were doing like a little seventies disco, you know, dance or whatever. Um we do see that Danielle is there. And, you know, 
we also see, as Danielle is saying, that everyone behind Ryan's back has been having conversations. Cut to they show Danielle on FaceTime with Four. They show her on FaceTime with Charmaine. They show her on FaceTime with Van. All of them, you know, talking shit about Ryan. And I see, that happens in the real world, too. In the real world, you and your co-workers do talk about your boss. You know, that does happen. The difference is... That's still your boss, so you respect your boss, period. And I'm guessing because Danielle ass don't work there no more, this bitch figure, she ain't got to respect Ryan. So she not only figure like she ain't got to respect Ryan, she like, I'm going to throw everybody up under the bus with my ass. So when Ryan walks over, Danielle, like, everyone been talking about you and your shop that's going down and how the shop is failing. All your employees, all your employees have been talking about you. And Four and Charmaine, like, because, of course, they talking behind that man back. They think it ain't going to get back to that man. But Danielle brought it back to that man. And for me, if you have an issue, take your issue up with who you have an issue with. Don't throw me up under the bus. That's also a reason to not give your issues to other people. Because when you do, if they feel like you can help them get back at someone, they're going to say, not only do I not like you, Jaylee don't like you either. Hold up. I ain't got nothing to do with this. And if I was Charmaine and four, I would would have been pissed at Danielle. Because I'm like, why are you bringing my stuff in? This ain't got nothing to do with me. And it was fucked up because Charmaine told Danielle when she got there, look, it's my birthday party. We don't have to bring up anything about Nia and Matt. Let's just have fun at my party. And not even two seconds later, Danielle had her eyes and mouth full of Ryan's name and Charmaine and Four and everybody else complaining. It was crazy. You know, Ryan was saying to Danielle, you don't even work here, so I don't even know why you're talking to me. And I agree. What you talking to me for? And it was just funny because Danielle was like, you know, it's not just your shop. It takes a village. It's not just your shop. And Van, Van, Ryan got mad. He was like, you know, show me how it ain't my shop. I dare anybody in here show me how it's not my shop. My thing is, it do take a village. It does no organization. Nothing runs on one person alone. That is true. However, if you don't pay the rent, if you don't pay the leasing, if you don't pay whatever bills it takes to have that that ownership, Ryan owns that shop. Y'all are his employees, and yes, y'all are his friends too. That's that man's business. Point blank, period. The village ain't shit if y'all can't afford the roof to, to house the village. You know what I'm saying? That's my thing that they keep forgetting. They keep saying, you are employees, okay? Okay? You are not, um business partners you're his employees if you want to be more than employees and i get y'all been working every year i completely get it but y'all going about this shit is making y'all look fucking ridiculous i mean y'all worse than the fucking chicago i mean than that um black and crew new york it's crazy how y'all really feel like y'all own shit you know what i'm saying like, it is not like Ryan trying to not let y'all make money and work. That's the part I don't get. It's just so fucking disrespectful. So, you know, Ryan ended up leaving because he like he over this shit. Because Danielle is just talking out to her ass. And again, you don't even work there no more, Danielle. Why are you even talking? Why are you concerned? Okay? You don't work there. So, yeah. Um, we see Four has a, a concert or a show or whatever. And a chick walk up. And she telling him that she's his cousin on his father's side. Now, during season, I think it was, I believe it was season one. If not, it may have been season two. I can't remember. Between season one and season two. Um, we do know that four father did pass away. He was, his father wasn't in his life much. But they did show how four was able to um, get to the hospital and at least say goodbye to his father on his father's deathbed. Um, and four has said before how he, his father was not um, around much when he was growing up. Um, so for me, for this random girl to come up, I thought she was a groupie. Let's, let's, let's just be honest. Um, but to say, I'm your cousin. I'm your cousin on your daddy's side. Your cousin, your daddy is my cousin. For me, it didn't come off genuine. My thing is, if you my cousin, I wouldn't even want to come to your show. And I wouldn't do that. 
I know where you work because you four off now. You, I know where you, I'm going to come to your job. And I would come with some kind of proof. It was the fact that she came and just said, I'm your cousin on your daddy's side. Um, your daddy is my cousin. It was just weird to me. Even for his girlfriend was like, are you really his cousin or are you just a groupie? Because it came off kind of groupie-ish. You know, Don was there too. We know Don and Four have different fathers. Um, and even he was kind of looking like it was strange. So, you know, Four let Don get the girl number because Don is Four's assistant when he out rapping and stuff like that. So, yeah. We had that whole part. Uh, next. We see Ryan and Junior is at the convention in Philly um, making money. Like, they seem pretty fucking busy. Um, There's a lot of people there. We also see how uh, Caesar from Black Ink Crew New York is there. And Ryan even teases him a little bit because Caesar has a big um, signage up. And he has, you know, Black Ink Crew. And he has each city that he has shops in. You know, we have a shop in Orlando. He has a shop in Atlanta. Um... But it also said Black Ink Crew Chicago. And Ryan like, you don't own Chicago? You know, that's me. He like, oh yeah, well how much you know, can I pay you to buy your shop? And Ryan like, it ain't for sale. So that was funny how they kind of played it back and forth. You know, but I still do wonder why C's would put Chicago on his thing when he don't own the Chicago shop. And the shop in Chicago says, the shop in Chicago is not called Black Ink. It's NIMAC. So I was like, okay, that's whatever. Um... But as Ryan and them was tattooing, Cobra walks up. Cobra, Cobra was on there last year. Ryan ended up firing her because it kind of just didn't work out. Her and Charmaine got beefed out over some punk ass glasses and all this stuff. Um, he ended up firing her, and when he fired her, she did like destroy like one of the rooms. But we're not destroyed. She knocked some stuff over. You know what I'm saying? At least a little bit. She, you know, knocked over like a plastic uh, drawer. She didn't like break a window like Van did. Um, we see that he also has Rachel with him, and Rachel's selling his merchandise. And he's like, you know who else? That's the person I can trust to handle my money when I ain't watching. That's true. That's You're supposed to get that kind of person with you. Um, so he does, him and Cobra are talking. They kind of bury the hatchet. Cobra does thank him because when her father died like a month ago, and I cried at this whole point because my father died two years ago. Um, but Cobra was saying, you know, thank you so much for calling me and checking on me, um, you know, reaching out to me when my father passed away. You were the only one who did that, and, you know, it really helped. She was crying. It was very sad. You know, she was saying how she knew how he could understand her pain because, you know, he lost his sister. So just on that strength of, you know, we both have lost someone so close, we know how deeply that hurts. And he's like, you know, for sure, you know, no matter what, you know, when I heard about it, I had to reach out just to be sure that you was okay. And she kind of said, you know, let's bury the hatchet. I'm sorry, you know, but can we move on from that? He's like, okay, sure. What you doing here? You got some time? You want a tattoo? So he invites Cobra to come help him tattoo because there was a lot of people there trying to get tattoos done. So Cobra does come over and she helps him tattoo and everything. He then invites her to come back to Chicago to do some work. Why? Van asks his band, and you know, you do good work. I know you was cool. You should come back. Ooh, we gonna see how that's gonna go. So, um, back in Chicago, Danielle and Van show up to the goddamn gone, uh, tattoo shop. <sighs> this is where I got pissed off. Because that's so fucking disrespectful. My thing is... You should respect your friends. You should respect your family. So, Danielle, bitch, you was fired. Then, your ass just out of pocket. Point blank, period. And, you know, Danielle and her confessional saying, you know, I don't need... Um, Ryan to, to give me my job back. I got Van. Bitch, Van don't own shit. Van don't sign your check. Van ain't even doing no goddamn on tattoo, so you need to watch where your fucking bread is butter. I cannot believe when she said that bullshit. You don't need the owner of a shop to give your job back because the guy who do tattoos is with you. That's the equivalent of saying you don't need the owner of the GMC company to give you a car. I can just talk to the guy who, who sweeped the floors. Just because he working on me, he can get he can get you. St I, when I tell you, I was so outdone at that at that amount of disrespect. How they 
said, we know Ryan out of town, so we're going to come to the shop. So fucking disrespectful. So, you know, Danielle is talking, talking to the receptionist, telling her how she not nine mag, how we nine mag, and you don't need to be here, bitch, you fired. Like, and she going in, and I'm like, Van sitting there laughing, Forrest sitting there laughing, Charmaine is looking on, like, what the fuck is going on? To me, it was crazy. Charmaine did step in and tell Danielle, you can't be talking to her like that because Ryan did hire her, and, you know, you not even mad at her, you mad at Ryan. You taking your aggression out on her for no reason. But still, y'all let that girl bully that receptionist girl. That, to me, was straight bullshit. Again, that's disrespect to Ryan. Um, even for saying, telling, telling the girl, because the receptionist girl was saying, Ryan, you know, my boss told me y'all couldn't be here. Y'all not supposed to be here. That girl trying to do her job. And for said to her, not for Van said to her, you can't tell me not to be here. And Ryan can't tell me not to be here. See, somebody just needs to beat Van's fucking ass. Because you... This, I, I can't believe the amount of disrespect that was. But again, y'all doing it when Ryan ain't there. Whatever. Um, that Charmaine then... not Char Well, yeah. No, not Charmaine. Danielle then fires the receptionist. Your services are no longer needed. I'm, we only need one receptionist here, and that's me. I'm the receptionist, so bitch, you need to leave. When you leave, take the trash out. And the receptionist girl is, she, sweet look, so, I'm so, I feel so bad for her. But she's trying to do her job, and she's like, Ryan said, you know, you guys can't be here, and I'm trying to do my, and of course, they just bullying her and bullying her and bullying her. And I'm mad at four for watching them do this shit, because he's sitting there laughing like it's fucking funny. And they was like some bullies. So the girl was like, you know what? I'm, you know, I'm not going to keep taking the disrespect, so I'm quit, I leave, I'm leaving, and I'm going to take the trash out. She then goes and gets the trash can, and she empties the trash all on the fucking floor. Bravo, bitch. Bra fucking vo. Me, myself, I would have emptied it on the floor and then probably smacked Danielle with the trash can, but... I'm a little bit, you know, when I get mad, I, you know, whatever. But no, I maybe I wouldn't have done that. I mean, I probably would have thrown the trash on them. I would have emptied it on the people. Yep, that's that's what I would have done. It was just it was just so dumb. And even Van saying to the girl, "You need to watch your mouth when you talking to us." Who the fuck is you? The receptionist girl left. Which is, you know, whatever. But then, even within that, after that happens, we see that Van, uh, Danielle, Charmaine, and all of them are, like, on Snapchat. Showing that they're at the shop. So, Ryan, who's in Philly, sees it. He's like, what the fuck is they doing at my shop? And he's pissed off. It was just straight bullshit. Um, we do, uh, a little bit, we do see that the girl who says she was Forrest's cousin comes to the shop and gets a tattoo. She ain't come with no proof. She still would have said that he is he, that he is her cousin and that her father his father was her cousin and that she knew it because he posted a picture of his dad on his Instagram and when she seen it she was like, Who posted a picture of my cousin? And it was him. And her mama like, Well yeah, you know, he had a kid. We don't know the kid and that's him. Whatever. Um the last thing is what makes me even more mad, and I'm going to try to wrap this up. Um, Charmaine is saying that she is the manager of the shop. So, because she, because she's the manager, she's going to say Van is not Van anymore. And because the other receptionist quit, um, I'm, I call Char I call Danielle to come back and work. Danielle, not Danielle, Charmaine, bitch, you the worst office manager ever ever. Ryan should have fired you first. Then he should have fired um, Danielle. Then he should have fired Van. That's the way that it should have went. Because y'all are our pieces of shit and disrespectful. I can't take a person disrespecting a friend. That's just me. Y'all taking advantage of the fact that he's your friend. Again, it's a TV show. And I'm assuming some of the stuff is just for TV. I, I completely get that. But at the same time, dis I, the disrespect is just, it's just stupid. It's just fucked up all the way around the board. So, they all, four, Don, uh, Charmaine, Danielle, Van, all at the shop drinking, partying. Yeah, yeah, we are back. 
the original Nine Mag family is the best. And you know, talking, 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 talking. Ryan walks in. Junior walks in. Cobra walks in. Charmaine instantly get pissed. This bitch. I can't believe you brought this bitch back. And Charmaine going to this bitch owe me money. She owe me two fifty. If you still worried about two fifty for some glass, glass, some glasses that you say she stole a year and a half to two years ago, you need to get over yourself. I mean, I, what is this? What? What? Bitch, what? And she's mad. And she's like, what the fuck is she doing here? And Ryan like, why the fuck is Van here? Why the fuck is, is um, Danielle here? And what the fuck is, I forgot the receptions of your name. And she's like, well, I fired her. And, you know, they can come back because I said they can come back. And Ryan like, see, you got me fucked up. Ryan again is pissed. So, as Ryan is being pissed, Cobra and Charmaine kind of talking back and forth. So, Cobra was like, bitch, you want to fight? Charmaine had all that mouth. All that mouth. And so, Cobra was like, bitch, you want to fight? Bitch, what? And they kind of going back and forth and people trying to break him up. So, that was cool. You know, Charmaine keeps calling Cobra a big bitch. Then yell, yell, yelling how they don't do this ghetto shit. Even though they the fuck do. Yes, the fuck you guys do. All fucking day. Um... Forward saying, let them address it. And Van in the background laughing because low key, Van won't that shop to fail. Because Van is jealous. I don't care what nobody say. Van jealous and Van won't that shop to fail. And that's why he keeps doing dumb shit. Um, so then it's all this, everyone's talking and yelling over each other. Cobra goes around everybody and just walks up to Charmaine and swings on her. And then Danielle all upset. I mean, Charmaine all upset. Then Danielle was like, get off my cousin, bitch. But your cousin was talking mad shit. And when you talk mad shit to a big bitch, huh, huh, whatever, um, things happen. And, you know, they're basically just, just tussling. And Ryan is like, you know, none of this would have happened if the people who wasn't supposed to be here wasn't here. And as all of that's going on, Cat walks in. And the episode goes off. I'm just like, look. I can't wait. I'm just going to leave it at that. Because that's all that really happened. That was the end of the episode. Um, I think Ryan needed to fire all of them. We do see from the next episode, they're going to some kind of retreat. I guess the do, do f fucking friendship building. I don't know. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Fuck four. Fuck Van. Fuck Charmaine. Fuck uh, Danielle. This is Jay Lee. <laughs> this is Jay Lee's Corner. I am Jay Lee. The whole episode was just crazy, 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 crazy. So we shall see what happens next week. How Ryan handles all of this. How with, with, with them all going to this retreat to get shit together and whatever. So until next week, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. And thanks for tuning in. Peace. Fucking assholes.